In 1991, Paula released her second album, Spellbound. To support the release, Paula was about to embark on an elaborate tour. Something serious happened, I think the night before the opening show. She had a broken leg and um, we, were, we were certain the dates would be canceled. Her knee was wrapped. She was in the back with her knee wrapped and she had ice on, on, on one of her knees and she's on a couch and a minute later she's on stage dancing for an hour and a half. But, you know, she, she went out there and she was able to, she was able to actually pull it off. That's the great thing about her. She puts on that game face and you would never know she's in pain. You'd never know she's tired. You'd never know how hard she's been working. Uh, she's, a, she's the consummate show person. When the tour took Paula to New York, she found herself staying at the same hotel as Brat Pack actor Emilio Estevez. We were staying at the plaza and it so happened that Emilio was staying at the plaza. And he left a message on the voicemail at the plaza and he said, you never would have dinner with me in L.A. How about here in New York? And at that time, she wasn't really dating anybody, and I would always hang out with her. We'd have dinner in the room, and, you know, we would just watch movies, and I'd constantly be telling her, you know, you really need to get out. I thought, oh, he wants tickets to the show. So I left a message back for him. I said, um, just let me know how many tickets you need for the show, and I'll be sure to leave them in your name. And then he calls back and I didn't ask for tickets to the show. I asked you to have dinner. And then I put the phone. I went, Daniel, what do I do? <laughs> I said, I looked at Daniel, what do I do? Daniel goes, No, you're going. I go, No. I'm like, Oh, you're doing this. If I have to pull you out the door and kick you out the door, you're doing this. He totally courted me. It was very sweet. And then I got married. Go figure. And of course, that's what you do. On April 29, 1992, Paula and Emilio were married. The marriage was short-lived. They divorced just two years later, in May of 1994. He's such a great guy. I, you know, I love Emilio, not just because of, you know, the relationship they had together, which was a great relationship. But it started great, and, you know, it ended, but it still ended as you know, that they were friends, and we all stayed really good friends. When I hear his name, and when I say his name, I smile. Fond memories. Not long after her divorce, Paula decided to face an issue she had struggled with for years. In the early night, she started getting very thin, almost frail, and that's when it really became obvious, at least to the public, that she might have a problem. One of the hardest hardest things that I ever had to face was admitting and acknowledging that I had a real problem. I had an eating disorder and I needed help. There's a tremendous amount of pressure in this business to look a certain way and to portray a certain visual image and she was under that pressure. I was so private about it that I didn't tell anyone. I found the, a remote place in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I found myself faced with being in a situation with other girls with various eating disorders. The worst part of it was, though, I was Paula Abdul. And I realized that they're freaking out that Paula Abdul is here took a couple of days to make sure I know I'm just like you guys. I'm please, please let me be part of this and, and the journey too. During her stay at the clinic, Paula went on an outing with the other girls. Fans followed us back to the clinic. And then the next thing you know, the next day, paparazzi, cameras everywhere in front of these girls and and me, and, and it, the next thing I know, it was just mayhem, and it was awful. And the best thing for me to do was to get out of there so that the girls, the other girls, would be left alone. It wasn't fair to them. I had to do an interview. I had to do this and that. I waited until all the craziness died down, 
and six days later, when it seemed like no one cared anymore, after it was all over the place and tabloids and everywhere, I flew my butt back to Tulsa, Oklahoma and checked myself back in. When Paula came forth with her disorder, honestly, she could have kept it within herself, but it wasn't about that. It was about throwing it out there and saying, okay, I'm willing to take the stuff that's going to come along with it, but I'm ready to give back. Paula turned the trouble she'd been through into a source of creativity. I dig down deep and I write and I wrote really good songs. She wrote a song for Kylie Minogue and it was a huge success. It was like a number one over there. The song Spinning Around went to number one in the UK. And then I got a call from my attorney saying there's a show in the UK that's unbelievably popular and it's this talent contest and all these kids come in and they're, they're you know, auditioning with the song that you wrote for Kylie. Can I have the producer's number? I'd like to talk to her. She said, oh my God, the show is so big that the queen clears her, her diary so she can vote. I said, you mean the country votes? <laughs> yeah. And there's these two wretched guys that are just awful and they tear these contestants apart and tell them how horrible they are. I went, oh my God. This she was saying how unbelievable it was and that probably the show would be coming to America. In about seven months, we'll probably, probably be here on us. When she saw that program over there and they contacted her, it was like, she said, oh, it's really great. You know, I have a problem with the judging <laughs> because Paul's a critical uh, but she's not abusive. <laughs> and almost seven and a half, eight months later, I got a call. I always liked Paula as an artist. I, yeah, she used to fancy her. So I was looking forward to meeting her. I thought she was cute. Now, my first day of work was in Los Angeles, and that's when I was going to meet Simon Cowell. And I remember thinking, this is going to be interesting, because we are polar opposites. I remember Simon and and Nigel Lithgow were joking around that what's wrong with the American songs that these kids, what song is that that they're singing a cappella? And Randy and I are going, that's Michelle Branch and Santana, it's like a number one record, you know. It's got great melody. And they're like, no, 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 no. And they're going, we have up-tempo songs in the UK. I remember saying how much I liked a Kylie Minogue song in England. And they started singing the Kylie Minogue song. And then I started singing along. And then they turned to me and said, how do you know the song? It's never been released here. And then I went, it's gone. And she turned around and said, I wrote it. And then it computed in their brains, P. Abdul, P. Abdul. I didn't know she had that talent. And then it was Simon, I hate that song. And that was my welcome to American Idol. Still ahead. According to Simon, I didn't have a personality before he came along. Without question, she wants me. To learn more about Paula Abdul and her family tree, visit genealogy.com.